Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation. I'm Arzu Jafari and PhD candidate at Northeastern University. I'm going to present mitigating supply chain disruption, designing sustainable networks using stochastic programming. In this study, I'm interested in mitigating disruptions in supply chain networks. And the question is, what are the main risks facing the supply chain? Or what type of disruptions may happen? So it's hard to prioritize them, but here I categorize them into two types, high impact disruptions and low impact disruptions. High impact disruptions include natural disasters, widespread labor shortages, and impacts of COVID-19 pandemic have significant effects on supply chain. Also, uh, low impact disruptions include price fluctuations, transportation failures, product recalls, and so forth. Disruptions can affect all areas of supply chain, including supply or demand side disruptions. And it's important for companies to be prepared for sudden disruptions and mitigate financial risk in the supply chain. So these various types of disruptions motivate me to design a complex supply chain network that experiences supply side disruptions and assess the effect of long-term strategies to avoid the impacts of disruption uncertainties. Although types of supply chains experience these disruptions, including healthcare, clothing, and agricultural supply chains, the focus of this presentation is mitigating supply side disruptions to agricultural supply chains. Specifically, I'll use um, ADM company as a case study, as it is one of the world's most prominent global agricultural processing companies. Within the ADM supply chain, I'll specifically uh, focus on long life products like wheat. ADM supply chain has a complex network. It includes over 220 grain elevators, 23 milling facilities, and 62 agricultural services processing plants. And also, it experiences multiple disruptions at multiple echelons, like um, disruptions at grain elevators, include sudden changes in grain prices, transportation costs, and weather-related grain availability. And for example, disruptions at milling facilities include unexpected downtime, shifts in product demand, for example, shifting demand of restaurants and grocery stores caused by COVID-19, and production recalls. As our mother focuses on supply side disruptions, uh, some of supply side disruptions that ADM faces includes loss of crops due to crop disease, changes in global demand, raising sea levels, climate change, government programs and policies, and so forth. ADM's current mitigation strategies include a proactive maintenance schedule to avoid unexpected downtime. Extreme weather disruptions, such as snowstorms and rainstorms, resulting in flooding, have been reported to cause disruptions in the ADM supply chain at both supplier and factory shows. The optimization model I will introduce on the next few slides accounts for these types of high impact supply side disruptions that may affect suppliers, factories, or both at the same time. I also discussed types of mitigation strategies that can be uh, considered to help companies like ADM make decisions in these situations and be able to be able to manage disruptions that happen in complex supply chain. So we propose a multi echelon supply chain under uncertain disruption to address financial risks and mitigation strategies that can reduce the impacts of disruptions. Specifically, we consider the echelons, suppliers, factories, and warehouses. In the ADM supply chain that we model, grain is sent from the grain elevators to the milling facilities and then sent to the warehouse where it is processed into a final product. Here, the supplier echelon corresponds to the grain elevators and the factory echelon corresponds to the milling facilities. We also assume that multiple disruptions may occur over the time horizon and disruption um, occur at nodes. Specifically, disruptions can occur at suppliers, factory, or both echelons 
at the time at the same time. An instruction may completely or partially reduce the capacity of the node. And the objective is minimization of total expected cost. And we propose two long-term mitigation strategies to manage the impacts of disruptions. Multiple sourcing is considered as a strategy for both echelons to reduce impacts of supply side disruptions. We also assume that companies are able to contract with recovery facilities such as suppliers and factories to manage disruptions with especially high impact risk. A company like ADM has the first strategy and the second one can be applied to it. For example, it may have two sets of suppliers and factories. For example, primary and recovery suppliers and factories. Primary locations are used in the normal operations when there is no disruption and after a disruption happens, such as a flood or COVID-19 disruption that um, reduces the capacity of one or more primary suppliers or factories. ADM has the option to use their recovery suppliers and factories to help meet demand. As this model is a multi-period model that allows multiple disruptions to happen at different times throughout the planning horizon, it's helpful to understand how a node recovers after disruption happens. Consider a supplier or facility that operates at 100% capacity before disruption. Once a disruption happens, capacity is dropped to a row percent and increases over time with a step function recovery until it fully recovers. Since multiple suppliers and fa facilities can be disrupted at the same time and at different times during the planning horizon. Multiple nodes may be in different stages of recovery and operating capacity at any point within the planning horizon. As I'm passionate about supply chain disruptions and mitigation, I developed a mathematical model for a multi-echelon supply chain network with the echelons and focus on supply side disruptions. My contribution is using to a stage a stochastic programming model in which uh, fractional disruptions may happen at both suppliers and factories. And this means that short and long term disruptions may happen at both echelons at the same time, which companies find difficult to manage. Model also allows disruptions to affect both primary and recovery facilities to make it more realistic. And then mitigation strategies are evaluated by using vendors decomposition and the result shows the efficiency of these strategies for different problems categorized based on impacts of disruptions, recovery times, and the percentage of capacity which is recovered after disruption happens. To design this model, I created two stage scenario based model where the first stage represent what happens before disruption, and the second stage represent what happens after disruptions. We also consider four sources of uncertainty in the model, for example, where disruptions will happen in the supply chain. In this model, uh, disruptions happen at both suppliers and factories. And when the disruptions will happen, how much disruption will reduce the current capacity and the amount of time it will take to recover after disruption. Scenarios in the second stage represent realization of different disruptions and their impact over the planning horizon. The most important decision variables in our model include selection, transportation, and lost sales decisions. The X variables are binary variables equal to one if a supplier or factory is selected as part of the supply chain. For each supplier and factory selected, the node is either used as a primary or recovery node. For example, XNPS shows the supplier N is selected as a primary supplier, while XMRF determines that facility M is chosen and selected as a recovery facility. Gamma is the fraction of demand shipped from suppliers to factories, and sigma 
defines the fraction of demand shipped from factories to the warehouse. We also consider live sales if disruptions affect the system and it can produce enough to meet demand. The object of the first stage is minimization of fixed costs and expected costs over the time horizon. Fixed costs are the selection costs you have to pay regardless of where there is a disruption or not. It's, it's the fixed facility cost associated with owning or contracting with a supplier or factory. And the second objective is minimization of production, transportation, recovery, and loss of costs over the time horizon. As you can see, the first two terms represent the production costs, suppliers and factories. The third and fourth terms represent the transportation costs from suppliers to factories and factories to the warehouse. The next terms show the recovery costs for suppliers and factories. And the last one is related to the cost of lost sales. These are all costs that are dependent on when and where disruptions happen and how impactful those disruptions are for the supply chain. The constraints of the model are listed here. In the first stage, a constraint is added to ensure a selected facility is chosen as either a primary or recovery facility, but not both. There is a flow balance equation that requires the fraction of demand coming to a facility is equal to the output. It's also important to satisfy all demand. And in the second stage, constraints show the production capacity for suppliers and factories. Flow balance constraints are counted to make sure that inputs are equal to output for its facility. As this part is related to after disruption, demand shipped to the warehouse plus losses should be equal to 100% demand. I'd like to mention that the application of this model is broad and can be applied to different types of supply chains, such as agricultural, healthcare, and fashion supply chains, and so forth. At the time of this presentation, um, we have coded the model and solution algorithm and are finalizing the ADM dataset. This model is able to analyze different disruption actions and uh, give some insights into the efficiency of mitigation strategies. The results of sensitivity analysis on different conditions, including different length of disruptions, time each disruption starts, available capacity after disruption, and ability to recover it are interesting to managers because they prefer to choose disruption policies according to different types of disruptions. So our next step will be to analyze the results of problem instances and identify managerial imp implications that result from evaluating various types of mitigation strategies. Thank you for watching this presentation and I'd like to thank my supervisor and my colleague for helping me out in this project.